Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Rainy Day Reads, and to another discussion video of the Betsy Tacy series for the Betsy Tacy Read Along. Today, we will be discussing the much awaited and much anticipated Betsy and Joe. The Betsy Tacy series has been building up to this romance of Betsy and Joe since the beginning of the high school series. And just everybody I feel like who's been participating in this read-along has just been waiting for Joe to realize his love for Betsy and for Betsy to stop hanging around with all these lesser men. <laughs> so I feel like this is what we've all been waiting for. At least I have. Now, Betsy has been quite boy crazy throughout the entire high school series. And to the point where a lot of participants in the read-along have expressed an annoyance with Betsy. And I totally get that. I mean, what high schooler has not annoyed an adult at some point in time? And I feel like Betsy is no different. Um, lots of high school girls throughout the centuries have been boy crazy to the point of annoyance to all the adults who have been there before. And quite frankly, were probably boy crazy themselves. But I think that this was at the author's design, really. Um, Betsy, every year, vows to get to know Joe better, or even to the point that she vows that this is the year that she is going to win Joe over. And every year, Joe avoids her and either goes with somebody else or we just never see him and he's never around. And then Betsy, instead of just focusing on school like we as adults know she should, she latches on to a different guy who is just paying attention to her for that period of time. And we all know that that guy is not going to last and is beneath Betsy, but she just wants to have a boyfriend. And I feel like that is kind of a normal thing for a high schooler to do. And I feel like that is also kind of a genius move on Maud Hart Lovelace's part because she really is building up this suspense of, you know, will Betsy ever just wait for Joe and uh, to come to her? And will she ever just realize that, you know, she needs to focus on her schooling and not these silly boys that are not good enough for her. And uh, yeah, in this book, we kind of get the answer to that. In Betsy and Joe, I feel like there was a noticeable shift in Betsy's personality, um, even from the beginning of the book. Every book starts off with Betsy in um, the summer vacation right before her new year starts. And every year she kind of thinks about what she's going to do with her uh, sophomore year, her junior year, and now her senior year. And this year, there was a lot more focus on school. In other years, she has talked about, you know, her schooling or her writing, but there has always been that undercurrent of guys, and usually Joe. And this year, there was nothing like that. It was all school-related. And I, and she just seems to have matured uh, at the beginning of this book. And it's, it's kind of subtle, um, but I think kind of, if you, you know, have been reading the book successively like we have, it's easier to see that, um, that, you know, huh, hey, she didn't say anything in her resolutions this year about winning over Joe or, um, you know, just finding a guy in general. She just focused on school and enjoying her senior year and and buckling down. She, you know, it was it was an interesting shift. I thought. Now that's not to say that Betsy was not uh, without her flaws and was still immature in ways. Um, we obviously see that through the events of this book. Um, she. She likes Joe, and Joe has finally 
seen that he likes her. I mean, that's not really a spoiler because the title of the book is Betsy and Joe, so you know that they get closer. Um, but there is also the added uh, drama of the fact that her friend Tony is starting to have feelings for her. And Betsy just doesn't handle this quite in the way that she should. She's naive about Tony's feelings about her, um, and she just, she kind of takes Tony's welfare upon herself. And she kind of pits Tony and Joe against each other without really meaning to, but she's naive to the to how Tony feels about her, and even to a point uh, the way Joe would feel. Um, she doesn't understand that uh, Joe would get jealous or um, that Tony would, would really pose a threat. Um, so she does end up kind of sabotaging her relationship that she's worked <laughs> so hard in this whole series to build. And yeah, it just... It doesn't go well for a while. I will, I'll just say that. I don't want to say much more because I don't want to give spoilers if you haven't read it yet. I will give you my, kind of my pros and cons about this particular book to try to sum this up without giving too many spoilers. Um, so number one, I really liked uh, just seeing the girls grow up. I enjoyed seeing more of Tacey and Tib and then we have in kind of the last couple of um, of books. Well, we we saw them, but I we got more of a personal story with both of them. Um, Tacy especially in this one, which was nice to see. Uh, Tacy's kind of always been the shy, um, not not boy crazy at all. Uh, to the point that her friends are starting to worry about her. Um, because, you know, in this society, it was pretty much uh, a given that you needed to find a man to help take care of you. Um, and, you know, being an old maid was a very serious problem to these girls. And they worried that Tacey was going to become an old maid because she just didn't seem to care about any boys. And um, through through events that happen, um, we see that they don't need to worry about Tacey. <laughs> and that's all I will say. But I really enjoyed how Tacey's story uh, goes. And I, I hope it's not finished. I hope we get more of that and see what happens in her future, but um, I think they definitely underestimated Tacy, and uh, she just she was just holding out. She wanted she wanted what she wanted, and she wasn't gonna be like Betsy has been, and uh, just latching on to every boy who bats an eye at her. Um, she she just didn't want them. She didn't want to mess around. She wanted there to be one person who fulfilled all of her expectations and uh, I, I really I really enjoyed that about Tacy's story in this book. I just felt like ultimately Tacy's storyline was very sweet and very satisfying and I just got all kinds of warm fuzzies with her. I really even though the drama in this was frustrating I liked the overall storyline with Joe and Tony and Betsy in this. Um, it did seem pretty real um, as far as how any any guy would act in this situation and um, just girls being naive about things because they can be and um, you know and even boys kind of being clueless as to what's going on uh, and just it kind of goes back to that whole thing where, you know, things could be solved if you just had a real conversation, but Betsy never seems to want to have these real conversations because she thinks that that is just too bold for a woman to do. And that's where I get 
annoyed and probably where most um, modern women would get annoyed because it's like, no, you don't have to be this demure little girl and just take whatever's thrown at you. You can say <laughs> what who you like and who you don't like and what's going on, you know. Um, so, but... But yeah, I just, I really enjoyed that whole uh, kind of dramatic build up to what ultimately happened. I would say that the only thing I really didn't like about this novel is kind of the way Tony's story ended. Um, and maybe it didn't end, um, but in this book, the way it ended. I felt like um, Maud Hart Lovelace gave too much power to Betsy. Um, it, it turned out, I'm trying not to give spoilers, but um, Tony's ultimate uh, conclusion of what happened with his relationship with Betsy seemed very dramatic and very kind of out of the blue. And it all seemed to stem from Betsy's ultimate decision. Uh, he, and, and even in, um, the previous book where uh, Betsy makes the sorority and Tony kind of goes off by himself because he doesn't want to be part of Betsy's new group. And he kind of goes off the rails and like really becomes almost a derelict. And all because Betsy started that sorority. And in this one, that kind of seems to happen again. Like, she gives him an answer to his feelings for her, and he kind of just does this, like, super dramatic thing in response to it. And I just felt like that was giving too much power to one situation. And, I mean, it, it doesn't turn out badly for anybody, really, but it just adds, like, kind of an unneeded drama and and just it, it gives Betsy a lot of anxiety um, because she she's this whole book she has decided that it is her responsibility to take care of Tony and lead him in the right direction and I kind of felt like Lovelace kind of perpetuated that um, in the ending of this and I guess like we're supposed to see that it worked out for Tony but at the same time, I kind of feel like it didn't that much work out for Tony. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to say without giving it away what happened. But um, yeah, I would like to know what you thought of of Tony's Tony's ultimate decision, and if you would have written it differently. Um, yeah, but that was really the only part of this book that I didn't like. If you've been with me since the beginning, you know that I am generally not a romance reader. I'm a kind of a bitter old lady at this point in my life, and I just generally do not like to read romances, but I really found this one to be very sweet, and I really was rooting for Betsy and Joe the whole time, and I just liked the slow burn romance that was involved in this. I enjoyed how uh, Joe's relationship with Betsy really started to bring him out, and how he he learned to trust her with some of his information. It it was very sweet to see that trust being built. And um, I just wanted to read you a couple of quotes that I, I liked from the beginning and from towards the end. Now, this is from the end of chapter four. Joe would be slow to let her or anyone else through the door of the room where he kept the problems he had met in the past, his plans for the future. Joe Willard wasn't easy to get acquainted with. But Betsy felt a sweet, strong certainty that she would succeed in time. And this is from one of the last two chapters of the book. Joe, Betsy said, you don't look like your uncle. No, I look like my mother's people. He's my father's brother. My father, Joe went on, died when I was a baby. He was a lumberman, yanked down, tree, yanked down trees in the northern woods. I've always been strong as a horse, and I guess it's because of him. 
And that was where we first really see Joe start to talk about his family with Betsy. And, you know, it takes their pretty much entire relationship at this point for him to be comfortable enough with that. And he still uh, won't talk about some other things with her. And, you know, it, it just proves that Joe has a lot in his past and he is not going to give it up lately, but that Betsy is the one that he is going to confide in the most if he's going to confide with anybody. So I think that just really shows a maturity in that relationship and that and that, that ultimately could be a real uh, relationship and, a, and real love, not just some of these other guys that she's been going out with in the past. So I really liked that about this book. So there you go. That is my discussion for Betsy and Joe for the month of June. And I would like to know if you are reading along with us and what you thought of this book and uh, how you felt in, in this book the whole time. And yeah, what you thought of the whole Tony thing at the end. I'm, I'm still unsure of how I feel about that. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you've had a great June so far and that you are enjoying everything that you are reading and that if you are uh, participating with us in this read-along, that you have enjoyed that as well. Talk to you later, friends. Bye!